All right, we're almost done. This will be all VSO'd nicely, or maybe not so nicely by the end of this. Wow, like Al Pacino, right? I'm getting lost in this gloss. <laughs> yeah, Moon Truther. Interesting in my case is sometimes, yeah, I, my thought process is strange. I, I, I'll be the first to admit it. YouTube, welcome back. You know, we have been working on the Socrat family for a while. And we have been working a lot on the intricate phonologies of the, the different languages in this B branch. The whole family is divided to three. We have the A branch, the B branch, and the C branch. We've given the B branch a lot of love. We haven't looked at A at all. And we've also been doing a lot of phonology and we haven't been doing a lot of um, really anything else. So we're going to try and rectify both of these things in this next segment. Uh, we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be working on the A branch and we're going to be working on evolving some some cool different grammar so uh with all that said let's let's scoot over to the side webcam and there we go all right so i'm getting a suggestion in for vso for uh for branch a so proto a is going to be a very different language than any of the other any of the other branches of this family so let's Let's make it our first thing. Let's VSO this. So if we're going to VSO, the first thing we should do is take this entire verbal complex and scoot it up to the front. Now, I am not, despite having been interested in, um, in Celtic, I am not intimately familiar with the literature on how VSO comes about diachronically. So if anyone knows about that, either in the chat now or on the comments, uh, in the comments, uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, uh, I'd be very curious to, to learn if there's been any diachronic work on the, the evolution of VSO order and what that's all about. Because uh, right now my approach to it is just literally <laughs> take the verb, put it at the front, ta-da. VSO. Yes. So that's good. So that's the first thing. Uh, so the first in the first sentence we have La bon kiris yopana tutan mayore. Uh, the north wind and the sun were disputing. And what did they dispute? We'll take this copula and we will put it up here. I'm going to take the whole um, I'm going to take the whole copula and its complement and put it up. So then we have something like they contended over which one had the most power, had power beyond all. Okay. And our grammatical particles are going to turn into affixes. Yes. So I think maybe we want to do something like, so we have this Wong, this our tam is up here, la wong, la wong kiris. Maybe we could do something like turn these into suffixes. <laughs> kiris wong, kiris wong la. If we wanted to go entirely the opposite way. Wong la or la wong, I'm not sure exactly which one. Kiris la wong. And like Quain points out, this is, um, there's some fun that can be had with the phonology here, but we're, we're going to wait for that. We're going to wait for that for a second. Okay, so they contended over who was the the one, over which one is the one that had the most power. Okay, good. Agreed. So we have all these copular constructions. So I'm going to take the copula, put it right after the complementizer, the copula, copula with its complement, and put it right after the complementizer. And we can put... Yeah, so that's good. This means was considered the winner. So they agreed that they would consider the winner the one who could first, who was first able to remove the clothes from the traveler. This is, these glosses are not fun to read, I have to say. Ooh, circumfix. Yep. So something maybe like this. La Kiri Swong. I like that. And this, um, these relative... Markers is a relative marker. I'd, I'd like to get a, I'd like to do away with that. So let's take that 
no, I want to get rid of this rel here and put it as an affix on the verb. So it's kind of like some sort of a participle. Hua, like Al Pacino, right? And so all of these, uh, all of these relative markers are going to become some kind of participle. It's going to go onto the verb first and we'll put it onto able and we can take these and put it below the verb. So being able first, what did I, what did I just remove? I forgot. <laughs> first able, Pedro, getting lost in this gloss. I have to be, I have to, I have to be honest with you. I know Pedro is first. What is Pui? I'm forgetting all of this stuff. Ah, Pui is able. So Tuar is remove. So this should be Puya. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> yeah, Moon Truther. Interesting in my case is sometimes, yeah, I, my thought process is strange. I, I, I'll i be the first to admit it. Oh, that's interesting, uh, Logan. Yeah, I have seen some of those papers. I think that your cap your capitals on highly contentious or well placed. In general, you know, I'm I'm almost less interested in the general case, and I'd, I'd be more interested in specific cases of, of are there intermediate steps between SVO and VSO in a, a language that went from one to the other, or SOV and SVO, you know, things that don't come from Romance languages, or English. All right. And so traveler is going to become robana, travel, participle. And then what we could also do is we could take some of these things like the malefactive and turn it into a, a case marking. So robana tra, that's cool. Yeah. So now we have something like la kiris wong yo panatutan mayore. Kiris bedahe te men huang isun kwenok. Drurusad dahe trong giraka puya pidru tuar mlestra robanatra. We went from SVO to VSO. Oh, wait, who's we? In, I'm talking about this language here. Um, Pataku uh, 93. I'm going to put the tra after robana because this is, um, it's travel, travel, the traveling one is kind of more derivational. And then we have the, the very clearly inflectional malefactive suffix going after it. So it, We'll see inflection going on the outside of derivation. Um, okay, then what else do we have? Yo panatutan pidru. So this is a needs to be raised. Used. No mio panatutan pidru misun nok huhu. And then we have this huhu kwe hungisun. The keener his blast, the closer the traveler. So we need. First of all, to take this ah uh, and put it as a suffix. So travel participle, and we need to put this verb up at the at the start. So have who 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 soon have blasts, and then we have this comparative particle power. So have blasts had the blasts more power. Oh, this glossing is terrible. Go back in time, someone, and tell me, tell past me to, to write this a bit more clearly. Because I don't remember what, oh, prop is proper name. Okay. Uh, I just, uh, Colin, why do you do the things you do? So then I have to take nom and raise that as well. And then the question is, when, where's this comparative? So this, com, this que is coming from a verb meaning to surpass. So have blasts power. I want to say this should come at the end. Like, so have blast power surpass. Let's just gloss it as more. Have blasts power more, meaning the blasts had more power. Use the traveler, the cloak more wrapped around himself to wrap around himself. Okay, so then let's put this over here. I don't know why I'm making these decisions. I'm purely flying by instinct right now. Hu 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 nisun kwe nom yo robana bate kwe dalernis. But I think it works out okay. 
I'm going to remove this, this quay. So I'm going to gloss it as more or more than, depending for this language. All right, let's see what else we're doing here. So we're, what's our, what's our verb here? Yapklat. So yapklat to give up or abandon. Gave up. And I'm going to just reorder this adverb, this adverbial here, up under the verb. Gave up at last the wind. Hope of victory all. Hope victory all. All hope of victory. And called the sun to see what he could do. Yeah, I don't think any of that, any of the other stuff needs to be changed to become SVO. Um, anything else we can do here? I don't think so. I'll put a comment in the gloss here so we can at least keep better track of our, our place. Do, 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 do. Yore nom tuarnok lanrit. Okay, at least we have a past here. What do we do with past? That's staying as a prefix. So it goes up to the start of the sentence. Past shine. Lanrit yore nom tuarnok. Great. Okay. Ah, stretch. Hydrate. All right. We're almost done. We're going to, this will be all VSO'd nicely, or maybe not so nicely by the end of this. Um, so what's our verb here? As soon as the traveler felt the sun's rays. So feel. So as soon as the traveler, pibrun is our verb. So let's get that up. As soon as felt the traveler. So robana, baurre, baurre. One by one took off his clothes. There's something wrong with this sentence. I think there's too much in it. As soon as the, as soon as felt, yeah, why are things being repeated? As soon as felt the traveler the sun's rays, he first drew drew. What does drew drew mean? One by one. One by one took off nglesio. What is going on here? What's this nglesio? I think I must have copied. Do you see what's going on here, chat? I must have copied and pasted something in incorrectly here. Dru dru la tuar les is what it should be. And then now la is a prefix. The suffering continues. Although I think that this will go above the adverb. Took off one by one his clothes. Great. <sighs> All right. And then what's our verb here? Remove. So tuar, tuar bakal. Oh, maybe we can put this bakal queen nok before tuar. Remove. No, what's going on here? Ah, by heat struck. Okay, yeah, that's good. At last, removed, remove. No, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do here? At last, struck by heat. No, this is actually suffering heat striking him all right it's fine then i guess remove clothes bathe becomes past i want to put this um locative as a suffix sidalbe stream locative and then path locative as well nakribe and we'll turn this relative into a participial suffix lying in his path. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. More or less, right? So now we have an interesting, an interesting uh, basis to start to make something that looks very different. Because now we have longer words, we have suffixes, we can play around with a, a different style of um, a different style of sound changes. And I think by the time we have made uh, versions of this story or of another short text in all of these languages, they'll all end up looking quite different. But I think, I think that is probably the extent of what my brain can do at the moment. So I'm gonna just scoot back over here and thank YouTube, um, our YouTube viewers for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. It's been, it's been a brain tester for me. Um, and a patience tester for, for all of us as I've struggled with this keyboard. But you know what? Good things 
are are worth the struggle. There's a little lesson from from your uncle Colin today. But anyway, thanks again, YouTube. We'll see you back here next time.